Hey folks, welcome to another VR video. Today I'm going back to NASA again. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal. And this time, before this Apollo 11 out, HD. Of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. So we're not going to go through the entire experience, um, but we're going to go through at least the opening portions here. Um, I have not played Apollo 11 VR or this new HD remaster, so I am excited for this. Um, yes, in 1957, Soviet Russia launched Sputnik 1. Um, I've actually celebrated Yuri's Night on the anniversary of that event. I met Buzz Aldrin at one of those at Moffett Field. Um, and America did intend to put a man on the moon, and it happened seven years later. Man can fully grasp oh, this is cool. So we're kind of in a theater. Yeah, with a movie projector. Also a television over there. And a lava lamp. That's cool. Can I pick up this newspaper? No. I believe this really only uses one button. There's a lunar capsule over there. Except at the end of them, advanced man had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves. To There's the rocket. Other kinds of this, is, this is really cool living space ago, here. Man learned to write and use a cart with wheels. Christianity began less than two years ago. The printing press came this year. And then less than two months ago, during this whole 50 year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles. This and guy doesn't really have a good concept of time. Only last week did we developed penicillin and television and nuclear power. And now if America's new spacecraft succeeds in reaching Venus, we will have literally reached the stars before midnight tonight. This is a breathtaking pace. And such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels old. New ignorance, new problems, new dangers. Surely the opening yeah. vistas of space promise high costs and hardships as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer, to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. For the eyes of the world, now look into space, to the moon, and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. I'm trying to watch the television the for a little while. The of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. This is really cool. And it is one of the greatest. Can't teleport around, but it would be cool to actually be able to move over and sit next to the television. Wonder if I there it goes. Pressing the A button does just that. It's pretty genius. The first waves of modern invention. And the first wave of the earth from the moon. And this generation does not intend to founder in the background of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. And its opportunity 
for peaceful cooperation may never come again. But why, some say, the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Christ play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. And there's the moon. We choose to go to the moon. That's, that is a gorgeous model of the moon. Again, it's it's hard to convey what I see in, in virtual reality because of the depth and the dimensions you're seeing on a flat screen, thinking it's probably no big deal, but this is beautiful. And again, I can't compare this... To, wow, there's the capsule. I can't compare this to the original because I ne I've never played it. Um, but this looks stellar. It looks really, really well done. All right, so we've completed the intro here. I wonder what's next. Okay, so we fast forwarded to the 16th of July, 1969. I think the momentous, uh, oh. most memorable thing that I can recall about that particular day was the opportunity while my, uh, my two friends even got were being birds. put into the Flying. This, is, this is amazing. Stand alone by myself uh, out there and look at the rocket and the quietness and see the sun come wow. up, and the waves rolling in, and the evidence of the millions. The of detail and lighting alone. This, this is so outstanding. Quiet, and realize that indeed uh, such a contrast is going to take place. All the frantic activity preparing the rocket, but it's so quiet up there for me personally. And that in a very few moments uh, we were going to be uh, departing in a, in a great roar and offer a moment. Man, look at that rocket. So massive. I'm assuming we're going to go ride up that elevator. Here we are. This is awesome. Hi. I thought uh, we had a 90% chance of getting back safely to Earth on that flight, but only a 50-50 chance of making a successful landing on the first first attempt. And one so of the three astronauts descending from lunar orbit. Down really can't surface. tell which one's which here. Demonstrated yet by testing. Um, it's a they don't look exactly like uh, equation. And uh, you're. Well, they may actually. I don't know what they look like risk. back in the 60s. So long as this is commensurate with the reward that you will get by achieving the goal which you're after. There's an engineer with a hard hat. We're out of the elevator now. Assuming we're boarding the capsule while it's loading. So I have to say, this documentary style, um, earlier this week I played Go for Launch Mercury. Uh, this documentary style is much cooler. The three of us are now in the spacecraft. All indications uh, coming in uh, to the control center at this uh, this time. Is, this is much more of a documentary. Um, again, we've still got the, the actual radio transmissions, but there's more than just sitting in a capsule, which is what all I really got to experience in that experience. Leading up to the ignition sequence at 8.9 seconds. We're approaching the 60 second mark on the Apollo 11 mission. T minus 60. And also, if you watch that, you'll recall there's just one panel in front of one person. Look at how massive this three-person capsule is. Power's on. 
with the launch vehicle at this time. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. All the second stage tanks now pressurized. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. Two minutes, 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, About 9. To off. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4. I'm going to actually watch the other two, astronauts here. One, so you zero, can see what it was like. See that vibration, like they're not going to be doing a lot of head turns, but he gave a thumbs up there. You also notice everything is digital in this craft. This is only eight years, seven years later than the, the last mission that I, that I did in the, in the Mercury capsule. And already we've switched to digital displays. Technology had really advanced in the 1960s. About a minute and 30 seconds into the mission, yeah, we're already into outer space. That's so cool. I, I got to watch him actually say that. Here we are in outer space. It's pen floating. It's amazing how just this pen floating in front of me is giving me so much immersion. And of course now they've cut off said immersion. <laughs> All right, so we are in Earth orbit about two hours and 45 minutes into the mission now. That's the Earth. Is that the capsule below? Or is that a reflection of the capsule actually? Not sure where I am right now, just kind of floating in space, but again, magnificent visual. Watching the sunrise. On a bit of a slant. <laughs> I think certainly to go as far away as the uh, moon and look back on the Earth uh, certainly does uh, affect your perspective. Uh, and then when you see it, tiny as your thumbnail held out in front of you at arm's length, uh, that sort of gets your attention. 
beautiful sight, tiny, pristine, blue and white, uh, very fragile looking object, shining like a beautiful little headlight out there in the black velvet of space. It does change your perspective. It makes you think that we have to take better care of this little fragile entity, because it is fragile. Houston, uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition, and everything is go. Factor Apollo 11 is go. All right, so this is the second phase here. I guess they're going to move from this rocket toward the moon. There it is. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go. Follow 11, this is Houston at one minute. Trajectory and guidance looks good and the stage is good. Follow 11. We're showing velocity 35,570 feet per second. When you think about it, there were so many people that worked to make this space flight happen, landing on the moon, getting back from the moon. Your predicted cutoff is right on the mountain. Factor power let go. Saw the movie Hidden Figures, which talked a bit about that as well. We're showing velocity 35,570 feet per second. Altitude 177 nautical miles. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are go at 5 minutes. Apollo 11, go. I am glad that they weren't so historically accurate that we just listened to three hours of that radio transmission or lack thereof, so... That would have been kind of a not impressive educational title. I'm sure that those tapes exist, though. I think NASA's kept probably pretty much everything. And most of it's probably public domain at this point. Okay, oh, we get to take control here. All right. So we are going to be in the command module for a docking sequence. Pitch and rotate the command module so it is facing the lunar module. Once you've completed this, you will need to thrust the command module and keep both the spacecraft aligned with the aiming rudder tools. We recommend you do this as gently as possible without damaging the aircraft. Well, pitch, thrust, and move. Here goes nothing. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, your go for separation. Uh, as a, our system's recommendation is uh, arm both spiral buses, over. Okay, spiral B coming armed. Uh, my intent is to use uh, Bottle primary one is for the checklist, therefore I just turned A on. There's the Earth. Uh, Roger, we concur with the logic. All right. Transpose the craft by pitching over using the right stick. Hi, Neil. We need to rotate the spacecraft now. I am trying to rotate the space. Okay, we got the eagle in view.
30 meters. 25. 20 meters. 15 meters. 10 meters. 8 meters. 6. 5 meters. Three, two, two meters, one meter. There it is. Ah, we didn't reach the target. All right. Well, we got close. We're going to go ahead and skip to the cinematic now. That's a cool, fun little feature. But I want to get to the moon before we end this video. So we're going to do a little bit more. They're going to do that piloting for me this time. Okay, we got the people in view. Ten meters. So you'll see the reticule's really only in view Eight meters. in that little aiming piece. Because if I lean down this way, you don't see it Six. at all. Five meters. It's interesting. I love how they're filming it as well. It's probably how they know what it looked Morning. like just from that footage. And capture. All right, we have docked. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Radio check over. Roger, we've got the high gain uh, locked on now, I believe, auto tracking now. Okay, you're coming in uh, loud and clear, but uh, Mike is just barely readable. Okay, how is Neil? How are you reading Mike? Uh, loud and clear now, Mike, and we understand that you are docked. That's fine. Houston, we're ready for lamb ejection. Uh, Roger, you go for lamb ejection. Thank you. All right, here we go. There's your landing craft. Roger, you to Apollo 11, go ahead. Uh, Roger, could you give us uh, some comments on how the transposition and docking went over? Yeah, I, I thought it went pretty well, Houston, although I expect I used more gas than I've been using in the simulator. Uh, except for using a little more gas, and I'd be interested in your numbers on that. Everything went nominally. This is Houston. Uh, Roger, we copy. Just a salmon swim upstream. It's a good quote from Neil Armstrong there. So we are now in orbit around the moon. About to land on the moon, assuming. There's that sun again. They've definitely made this a beautiful experience. I, I don't know if this was really an accurate portrayal, of course, because it's very somatic. But 
from a cinematic educational experience, I could definitely buy in. It's, it's beautiful. Eagle Houston, the alignment and the initialization look good to us, over. Uh, there's the capsule. Now, of course, Michael Collins stays in that Eagle, other capsule while, while the landing, landing capsule goes down with zero, just six, Buzz zero, Aldrin one. and Neil Armstrong, who were the first two men on the moon. Okay, you guys Apollo 11, Houston, we are go for undocking, over. Go. Roger, understand. Roger, Eagle, for undocking. Roger, how does it look? Eagle, where is Lee? Houston, we, Houston, we see you on the stairwell, over. I do believe you got thrusters on board that vehicle. Okay, you've got it. Turning around to get ready to land on the moon. Uh, Roger, let us know when you're ready to copy. We have a DOI pad, the and a PDI pad, over. Guidance says we're going. Coming up on five minutes to ignition, Gene Cran's getting a go, no go for descent. Okay, all flight controllers, I'm going around the horn. It's going to make your go, no go. Space from the Dady has for an LOS. See, we got a back. Give me a few seconds. We're going fine. Okay, retro, go. Final, go. Guide, go. Control, go. Telcom, go. Jinsey, go. Econ, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go to continue. PDI. See the sun, and I believe that's the Earth. We're going to take control of the lunar module the flight trajectory so that we can land we're likely going to crash So I have played lots of Lunar Lander in my time. It's very, very likely I'm going to crash. Never been in a real Lunar Lander. Now I am. So this craft, of course, only holds two. Yeah, I flew out of range. I'm going to skip to the cinematic version 
And once we land on the moon, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Um, but let's get there. Let's get to the moon and the Apollo 11 HD experience here. Hey, you, Neil. I'll leave it flu. Relay to it. See if they got me now. I got good signal strength and flu. Okay, you should have now, Houston. Eagle, we got you now. It's looking good. Over. Eagle, Houston, after y'all around. Angle, uh, S band pitch, minus nine, y'all, plus one eight. Altitude 5,200 feet. It's still showing the mission time, so we're 102 hours in at this point. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. Roger, understand, go for landing, 3,000 feet. Alarm. Here we go. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go, same tide, we're go. 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet, into the ag, 47 degrees, roger. 47 degrees. Eagle looking great, you're go. Altitude 1,600. That is the moon. Still looking very good. Roger, we'll copy it. 35 degrees, 35 degrees, 750, coming down to 23. 700 feet down at 19. 540 feet down at 30, and at 15. Here we go. And 400 feet down at 9. Gate forward. 150 feet down at 4. 30, rip the half down. Their uh, tag gun nut, horizontal velocity. 200 feet down, 3 and a half. 47 forward. On one and a half, one and a half down. 70. At the shadow up there. 50 down at 2.5. 19 forward. Altitude, velocity, light. 3.5 down. 220 feet. 15 so yeah, forward. that is accurate. It's timed very well, so about 200 feet up. 4.5 down. 5.5 down. 660, 6.5 down, 5.5 down, 9 forward, 10 feet, 100 feet, 3.5 down, 9 forward, 5%, 185, 875 feet, that's looking good, down a half, 6 forward. Almost there. 60 seconds. Lights on. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. This is amazing. 40 feet down two and a half. Breaking up some dust. 30 feet two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Down a half. 30 seconds. Forward, drift. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Five feet MGA up. Here we are. Both control, both auto decent engine command override off. Engine on, engine 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 off. Engine on, Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. 
Roger twin tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch so of guys amazing. about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. All right, so I'm going to end it there, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed exploring the moon while well, getting to the moon. I'm, uh, at the foot of the ladder. I the hope that you can check this out someday. Uh, it's available not only just on the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, but also on Oculus Go and Gear VR in a mobile experience. I'm on the moon right now. This is just amazing. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR, and thank you for watching.